Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Illinois, it's been a while since we got to talk. Apparently, either your state decided to quit updating data or all of you just decided to quit registering your firearms. And as I have oftentimes said, I really honestly do not believe there is any state that could hate its citizens any more than the state of Illinois. Now, you guys are already subjected to a FOID card, an assault weapon ban, a gun registry. One would think that there is really no blood that could actually be let out of you anymore. But no, 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 no. A contraire, because your state legislature is at it again. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about a piece of legislation, which candidly, if it becomes law, uh, most of you are probably just going to start warming up the moving ban. So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about proof that Illinois really does hate its citizens. Okay, hey, before we get going too far down the road, we are going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Ground News. Listen, I tell you all the time here at Washington Gun Law that we're not going to tell you how to think, but we are going to give you all the stuff to think about. In today's climate of media bias and censorship, however, where can you actually find unbiased information from the news sources? I know that you value individual liberties as much as I do, and with that should come the ability to have objective, transparent news so that you can make up your own mind. Hey, that's why I've been using Ground News, with links to over 50,000 sources worldwide across the entire political spectrum. Ground News empowers you to form your own conclusions about every story. Wow, what a novel concept, huh? Hey, this is how it works. Okay, you search out your story. Immediately, you can start examining the bias distribution, see where this story is coming from and how frequently it's coming from that political spectrum. You can actually compare headlines across the political spectrum to see exactly how the story is really being reported. You, you can even see the original news source and who owns that source. And here's the coolest feature. It's the blind spot. You can actually see stories here that are being covered almost exclusively by one side of the political spectrum, and it really will help you understand where the other side is coming from. So stay informed on breaking news and avoid misleading media narratives by subscribing through my link, which is at ground news slash Washington and get 30% off a Vantage subscription. Listen, break free from modern day media bias and get some truly objective information so that you can form your own opinion. Visit my friends at ground news. Okay, what are we talking about? What could we possibly be talking about in the state of Illinois today? Well, that is House Bill 3239 brought to you by Representative Mara Hershauer. Uh, and we'll talk about that bill in a second. In the meantime, I want to give a shout out to the individual who tipped me off on this piece of legislation. That is our none other than our boots on the ground, always reporting on what's going on in the state of Illinois, and that is Dr. Naper Villain Bunny, better known, and you can find her at Twitter right here at Type 07 Safety. If you're not following her, Illinois, one, very entertaining. Number two, incredibly informative. So to Dr. Naper Villain Bunny, thank you very much for tipping me off about this. Now, we're going to talk about House Bill 3239. What does it do? It does a few things, but the two big things I want you to understand is it creates a new type of permitting, which is a firearm transfer permit, which means you actually have to go through a background check to then go purchase a firearm. And then it adds mandatory training. Anytime any of you come up for renewal on your FOID card, you're going to be having to go through mandatory training. Now, I get it to the folks of Illinois. You might sit there and go, well, we're used to this. We're constantly getting kicked in the shin. So I guess this is just going to be another step. No, it's not going to be another step. What it's going to be is it's another tool by which they're going to use to disarm all of you, the lawful and responsible gun-owning Illinois residents. Okay, the first thing this bill does, it adds a whole new section to the Firearm Owners Identification Act and now establishes that any time you want to so much as even purchase a firearm, you will need to go and apply to your local police department for a firearms transfer permit. And if, God willing, the local police department grants you that permit, it is only good for 10 days. This creates a triple background check system. Don't believe me? Check this out, Illinois. All of you have to go through a background check to get a FOID card. 
you have to have the FOID card in order to get the firearms transfer permit, which also requires a background check. And then, of course, you're going to go to a reputable FFL and purchase a firearm, which, of course, will run you through a background check. So, Illinois, if this becomes law, you're going to have to go through a background check to go through a background check to go through a background check in order to purchase a firearm. I'm not making it up. But if you think that's evil, consider two other things. First, this will absolutely positively assist in what is already being created, which is the Illinois Gun Registry. Don't believe me? Well, here's what else the bill states. Each local law enforcement agency shall keep records of those permits and make them available to the Illinois State Police through the law enforcement agency's data system. What else would they be accumulating that data for? And then, since we can't have May issue carry regimes anymore, what this legislation does is it just turns the firearms transfer permit into a May issue and gives law enforcement broad, broad discretion. Again, the bill reads, the local law enforcement agency may deny a permit to purchase a firearm to an applicant if the agency, in its discretion, believes it is in the interest of public safety. And then the second thing that this bill does, and this relates to FOID cards, is if you are applying for a FOID card or you're asking just to renew your currently existing FOID card, you will have to complete an eight hour state sanctioned, state licensed live fire training program in order to continue that card. The specific language of the bill reads, if he or she is applying for or renewing a firearm owner's identification card, that he or she has completed at least eight hours of handgun safety training approved by the director of the Illinois State Police. Okay, now for any of you who still don't think this is a big deal, the training program will have to be approved by the Illinois State Police. It is a high probability that what they will create is a program that is virtually impossible to find, virtually impossible to comply with, virtually impossible to get signed up for. Don't believe me. Ask anybody in the state of California because this is the subject of several lawsuits about the fact that they have now mandated training. They've removed most of the private instructors from the training curriculum, so now you can only get it through a law enforcement agency, which shockingly has been defunded, so they are overworked and understaffed. They don't have the money or the resources to put together the program. Shockingly, nobody could actually go get the training necessary to get a firearm, and that is exactly, Illinois, how they will disarm you. Okay, and then of course, with this firearm transfer permit, you have to present it to an FFL. Any FFL who sells you a firearm without getting a transfer permit from you is guilty of a class one felony. When I looked that up in Illinois, that says somewhere between four and 15 years. So dang, that is serious. Okay, the bill once again is 3239. We will link it up down below so that you guys can geek out on it for yourself. It is an atrocious piece of legislation, but because we are talking about the state of Illinois, one that could be passed perhaps in the next 48 to 72 hours. If you got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is down there in the description box. And then let's everyone remember the part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.